Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to be channeling Janice Joplin in the afterlife. Now, Janice actually popped into one of my private small group channeling sessions. At the very end, I'm like, I was doing a channel panel where I do multiple people at once, and I had two musicians, and then she kind of just showed up and I was like, wow, okay, let's do a separate channel with just you, Janice, because I know many of you viewers have also requested that I channel Janice Joplin in the afterlife. So here we are. All right, thank you so much for coming in today so that we can connect. I know it's been kind of a busy day for me. Well, not really busy, like mind day. Like I've been really in thought and doing a lot of journaling and that kind of thing. And I knew that I would channel, I wanted to channel today, but I wasn't sure who. So I appreciate you coming in because your vibe is so cool. You have such a cool vibe. So you guys, for viewers, this is what I know about Janis Joplin. I know she's a musician. I know that she died in the early 70s, and I know that she was around during the 60s and 70s. So that's what I know about her, popular musician. Okay. All right. So, and I know she died young, you know, younger. So... All right, so Janice, let's talk. So her vibe, she has this really cool um, <clears throat> guitar strap on. It's real thick. It's like a tapestry-like kind of a, uh, and I don't know what the kind of fabric. It's a thicker fabric. And then she, her guitar that she actually holds is like a two-tone color. It's mahogany, a deep, rich wood color, and like a honey color. And then it's got like a, um, um, a trim in like uh, the body of it has a trim in like uh, white and she's telling me I'm an Elvis fan and so she's telling me I'm an Elvis fan and I know that might be hard for you to believe but I'm an Elvis fan she says and she says and I liked the Beatles totally fine by me totally cool by me even though I was considered part of she says part of like the um, folk music group and she's talking about the mamas and the pop papas she's talking about mama Cass and she's talking about, um, oh, John Lennon, very peace. And she says, you could typecast me, yes, and maybe see me as just some hippie. But the truth is there's such a beautiful artistic vibe that moved through music at that time and that during that time when you know, there was just so much upheaval. There was so much questioning of the status quo and of the systems and structures that are in place and government and too much power. And, and the people who were in power just hungry for more power. And it just, it was a time in our country that we needed to be able to rise above anything that we felt suppressed by. The suppression had to end. It had to come to an end. And it was a time to embrace the love in our hearts and to demand peace so would you consider yourself an activist yes she said yes yeah yes i would yeah i would a lot of a lot of the lyrics that we wrote fueled the the protests and the movement toward peace and and the protests were supposed to be peaceful not um, none of the the drama that you might think of it the intention was so loving and so generous and there were a lot of people that really supported our work and in multiple communities and we would go you know a bunch of us would travel around and we would go to different festivals and just create this vibe of love and of hope and to remind people that there's so much more than what you hear on the news or what you read in the newspaper and at those times it was always like the newspaper you know, and everything was always slanted or skewed to one side or the other. So the political parties had a lot of fight. There were a lot of, there was a lot of, of things written and a lot of back and forth, just much like how you're dealing with things today. So it's not really that different. I think you'll see more people who are rising up to, to really sing or use their voices for good and to push back against the establishment and it's it's time for that but but you have to be a little more strategic about the way you approach things and not to just disconnect from from the establishment but you, you've got to find ways to work within the established structures and the systems that are already established and that's how you can really make change that's how you can really make a difference and now with like your internet and how people can organize and coordinate it's just so different than the way it was back 
you know, in, in the, the late 60s, there was just not, it wasn't that, it was all word of mouth and a lot of students got really involved and created this, this um, broad movement of, of peace. And the goal was to throw the power off balance, to make enough of waves that it pushed the distrust away so that all was revealed was the truth. And the truth is all that we wanted. And anyone who loves peace totally respects the truth and people who are willing to stand up and share their beliefs. And, and you can have conversations without getting in big fights with people. And it's not about you're right and I'm wrong. It's really about just this community of coming together in a different, a wide, wide variety of views and the tapestry of diversity. It, it wasn't about who has it harder, who has it easier. It was just about us as people, as human beings. And that's what humanity is all about. And so people who work for peace, people whose messages are peace-based, like John Lennon, it brings such a, a level of you know, harmony to, to the environment and to what is needed now. You have a lot to say, a lot to say. And then I can see she's showing other people like Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, is it Hendrix or is it Morrison? I don't, and you guys, I don't know, like I'm not a big mega fan, I, a lot of different people. She's showing me the reggae, oh my gosh, Bob Marley, I can see him. Just a whole wide variety of voices and different styles. Oh, and she's, she's showing me how she's influenced by a lot of different styles. Okay, so that's something I was gonna ask you about. Who influenced you, Janice? Who really had a great deal of influence over your, your music career and the style of music that you shared? There are many, she says, there's many. There, there are a lot of people who are influential, who've been influential in my life. I don't know who that is, I can't tell. I can't see just a minute here. She's trying to tell me and I can't get a name. It's actually like hurting my head trying to get a woman's name. The Mamas and the Papas, Cass Elliot is one that there's a little bit of a confute, not conflict, but a little bit of a contrast there. I'm not sure what that means. Is there a, I'm seeing like England and British people. Um, I just, I can't, there's, she's showing me like jazz, jazz clubs, like jazz musicians, African-American jazz musicians. And something like a unique sound, like the, in Memphis, being like Tennessee, Kentucky, almost like a bluegrass or something kind of influenced, but different, like more, um, more of like a raspy throat kind of a thing. Um, she feels like, if I was gonna compare it to somebody, she feels like Bob Dylan, but the female version of. Does that make sense? That's how she feels to me. Who? So who influenced you? Yeah, she says Cass Elliot. But there's something about that I'm not quite sure, I'm a little confused by. People that we wouldn't have heard of, it seems like. And it feels like jazz related and African-American. I'm trying to see where she fits in like in the landscape of the other artists and during her time. Can you show me anything specifically about your career? I sure like traveling around to festivals and things like that, but I, sh I keep seeing England. 
like Great Britain. I'm not sure why that is. And I see a drummer being in love with a drummer. But I think she was really open with her love. Let me just say that <laughs> about that relationship wise. I don't know that she not necessarily had a personal preference um, for men or women, but it looks like she was in love with a male drummer. And then I see like the Thunderbirds or something like that, like the Thunder something. Thunder being something like that, Thunder something. I don't know what this means. I'm not really well versed in that was before my time, let me say that. <laughs> Maybe that's my excuse, huh? All right. So is there something specific that you would say to us here in the world now, where we're at now, either musically, like to other musicians or creative singer songwriters, or to us as a society? She says, you gotta make change. She's like, you make change. You make change. You make the change, she says. You have so much more control over things than we ever did. You have so much more say and influence than you really believe that you have. It doesn't look like it right away, but if you take those steps and you continuously have your behavior match your ideals, then you are gonna be successful and you are gonna make change. You are gonna make change. And you know, when you stand up for something, it gives other people courage to do the same thing. It does. And I don't want that to be lost on anyone. All right, so I also wanna talk about, well, let's see here, how do I, I don't wanna be rude, you guys. I know I'm talking to like spirit, but uh, can we talk a little bit about um, how you left the planet, how you left your human life, and are you incarnated again? I feel like she is. Wow, that's a shock. I was. So she may have come back and then left again already. Wow, that's interesting. Potentially, you guys, potentially. I'm not a past life expert, but feels like she came in and then she left. Interesting, okay. And so not as anybody famous. She just said not, not famous, not famous, not anybody famous. And then she, okay, so I'm wondering if she had an overdose because there's this, um, there's like a circle and it's a hole and there's like a, a void or a gap and there's like this hole I'm trying to fill. Like I got a bad something. I feel like I got a bad something. So I don't know if she got a bad batch of something or if she had too much met like actual prescription medication and it was like an accident, but I feel like she overdosed. And I, but I also feel like she may have dealt with some, it looks like some value stuff inside, like some pain where like some mental health stuff where I don't feel like I'm enough and I'm constantly fighting this struggle, this battle with myself, like feeling like a victim, but then showing on the outside that I'm not a victim and yet trying to come to terms with like what I am shouting and singing about, but yet feeling this incredible gape, like there's a big hole there and trying to fill that. But I, I feel like she got a bad something. So I don't know if she got a bad batch of, of a drug or something or what happened, but she got something that was bad and it didn't um, help her. And then she talked about, she talks about numbing the pain. And again, I see like Bob Marley and I see, I see Jimi Hendrix, but it might be Jim Morrison because I don't know what he looks like. I know you guys are gonna be yelling at the video thing, but you guys, I don't follow celebrity stuff like that, like old school celebrity stuff really, so I don't know. Um, okay. And I see her near Hollywood, like Hollywood Hills, like I can see the, the rolling hills in Hollywood. I can see that, so I'm not sure what that means. I don't know if she lived there or what the deal is, but I see the hill, it's Hollywood Hills. And it wasn't the West Hollywood place, it was someplace else, okay. And then I, I go over to Europe again. Here I am in Great Britain. I don't know what the attachment or connection is there. I see her being active, like politically active, like, um, I just see her like really touting active activism. Let's say that. That's probably why we were gonna connect. I'd love to chat with you some more. 
don't know a lot about you. I'm sure that the viewers will fill in some of the blanks and give me some other questions and things to ask you, but I'm not really sure what else to ask you about. So I do want to say thank you. Thanks for showing up. I'm sure we all could use this inspiration right now, right? All right. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. All right, you guys. Here was my first crack at an interview or a channeling session with Janice Joplin in the afterlife. Go ahead and fill in those blanks, you guys. Put some questions down there so that maybe I can talk to her again and actually ask her some stuff that matters to you because that would be a good idea. I knew I needed to connect with her, but I'm not sure that I got enough content or substance for you, for what you need from the message from her. So go ahead and put it in the comments below and then maybe I can channel up another session with Janice Joplin in the afterlife. For now, I hope that this has inspired your spirit as all of our connections do as our intent and that you are filled with hope. And to remember that this is your life. This is your life, regardless of what the afterlife celebrities share with you. The insights, this is your life, your life. So live it, just live it. Thanks for watching.